the stage, Diamond and U.S. founder 2.0, Dr. Natalie Underberg. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I am so excited to be talking to you today, and it's an honor to stand before you today as a Diamond in the U.S. founder 2.0. So professionally, I'm a functional medicine doctor specializing in women's health, fertility, and hormones. Woo! And in my practice, a big piece of what I do is help patients uh, with metabolic health and hormones. So as you can imagine, I was pretty excited to find out about our amazing MetaPower system that came out last year. Today, I know you guys haven't heard anything about this this week. But today, I want to dive into a topic that affects each and every one of us. The intimate connection between sleep, metabolic health, hormones, and blood sugar. But first, I have a question for you in the audience. Does anyone wake up between 2 and 4 a.m. each night? Oh my gosh, a lot of you. Okay, I'm going to blow your minds. You'll be ready. So how many of you that just raised your hands think that this is due to insomnia or sleep-related issues. Okay, you think you have insomnia, right? So, what if I told you that the reason you were waking up between 2 and 4 a.m. was because that there was a metabolic and blood sugar component to this? A lot of times people don't make that connection. Did you also know that if you're generally healthy and you find yourself waking up between 2 and 4 a.m., it can be directly connected to blood sugar imbalances. And if you do wake up between 2 and 4 a.m., this is usually a warning signal for unstable blood sugar patterns. So, oftentimes this midnight waking is due to a drop in blood sugar. And I know that some of you, this might be surprising for some of you, and you might even be thinking, but I ate a healthy dinner, or I didn't eat after six. I didn't do any late night snacking. But believe it or not, if we are under eating during the day or eating too much of the wrong foods, this can drastically affect cortisol at night, which is our primary stress hormone. And when blood sugar drops in the middle of the night, this signals a rise in cortisol, sending signals to your brain to wake up. And this is why you wake up in the middle of the night. You may or may not be able to fall asleep when this happens. Some people fall right back asleep. Some people don't fall asleep at all. But I'm going to share with you some things that you can do to support this so that you can hopefully improve these patterns and improve your sleep. So first and foremost, something that you can do is eat a protein-rich breakfast every single morning. The next thing that you can do is eat 30 to 40 grams of quality protein at each meal. You can also reduce excess sugar and processed food consumption. It's directly related to your sleep. And you can also incorporate the MetaPower line into your daily routine. My favorite tip of all though is, I have coined this term <laughs> in my brand, but you can actually walk for 10 to 15 minutes after each meal this is gonna be the most powerful tool that you have in your toolbox to balance your blood sugar. So don't underutilize that tool. So if we are not managing stress during the day, not eating enough, or eating too much of the wrong foods, like I mentioned, this can drastically affect our cortisol at night. And the health consequences of inadequate sleep affect all different body systems in our body. Hormones, heart health, metabolism, our emotional response, our immune system, they're all affected. They're all affected by sleep, and then they all affect our hormones. So research even shows that just one night of four hours of sleep results in a 70% reduction in natural killer cells. These are an essential part of our immune system. The good news Quality rest can support improvements in all of these areas. So inadequate sleep doesn't just leave us feeling groggy. It can lead to serious 
health problems and significantly impact our cognitive health as we age. So one study done by Harvard found that individuals that slept five hours per night or less were twice as likely to experience significant age-related decline in cognitive health versus those who slept six to eight hours. Take a picture of this if you'd like. Another study done by the NIH showed that if you are in middle age and you're getting less than seven hours of sleep, your risk of cognitive decline in neurodegenerative disorders increases by 30%. Women, women in the room, listen up. Women are also at higher risk in the postmenopausal phases due to a decrease in estrogen levels. Our estrogen levels naturally decrease as we age. And this is why, if you're in the room, you're a woman, we cannot neglect our phytoestrogen complex for this reason alone. Who loves the phytoestrogen complex? Okay, awesome, it's one of my favorites. So, research also suggests that the average adult requires a minimum of seven hours of sleep. But how much sleep do we actually need? That is the real question, right? An ideal amount of sleep really is between seven to nine hours. But ladies, take note, women actually need more sleep than men. So, right? So gentlemen in the room, you all need to be making breakfast for your wives. Yes and letting them get the extra sleep, that's doctor's orders, and you have to do it. Not only that, men, you wanna to listen to this part too. Hormones play a crucial role in our well-being, and sleep is intimately connected to their regulation. So poor sleep and hunger hormones, like leptin and ghrelin, can be affected, I'm sorry, uh, poor sleep can disrupt hunger and satiety hormones like leptin and ghrelin. And not only this, but when this happens, it affects our body on a massive scale. The impacts of poor sleep can pour over and it can impact the way and rate at which our body stores fat. It can affect cognitive function, like I mentioned. It can lower our immune response. It can slow down metabolism increase our stress hormones, which also contribute to increased fat, increase our fat storage hormones. And many of you may not realize this, but the kickstart process for our hormones is actually in our brain and it's most active between the hours of 1 and 3 a.m. So if you're lying awake at 1 to 3 a.m., not sleeping because you're on a blood sugar roller coaster, this could be a problem. So, if your sleep is being disrupted, moral of the story is that your hormones will follow suit. And this can lead to a plethora of issues, like menstrual cycle dysregulation, heavier periods, and it can also impact fertility, mood, and more. It's pretty wild how it's all connected, right? So, to achieve quality sleep, let's talk about some sleep hygiene tips. Sleep hygiene is probably one of my favorite things to teach my patients about and talk about. So first and foremost, avoiding your TV or phone one to two hours before bed. You don't have to raise your hands, but how many of you are scrolling on Instagram before bed at night? I see all of your hands silently raised. I know, I'm guilty of it too, don't worry. Sometimes. Um, so what happens here is that blue light inhibits melatonin production which makes it harder to fall asleep, and it lowers our natural melatonin production. And exposure to blue light before or during sleep can, can, act, can actually contribute to obesity. So we've talked a lot about metabolic health. We'll kind of tie this in a big bow. Researchers actually found that women who slept with a television or light on were more likely to gain weight and develop obesity. Findings of this study suggest that turning the lights off at bedtime could actually reduce your risk of obesity. So some more sleep hygiene tips include avoiding stimulating conversations or reading emails before bed. Don't do taxes before bed, okay, you guys? It's just never gonna, it's never gonna end up well. Taking a relaxing bed, or taking a relaxing bath with serenity or balance 
before bed with low light. This is something I tell my patients to do all the time. Take your balance bath. Wear blue light blocking glasses one to two hours before bed. I love the one with the red amber color lenses. Those are the best in my opinion. And then also diffusing Serenity Blend in your bedroom. Speaking of melatonin and sleep, the newly formulated Serenity Soft Gels, which I love, are truly a brilliant combination. So some star players that are included in this formula, one of which is Tart Cherry. So this actually contains tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin, our happy hormone. Who wants to be happy, right? All of us. And it also contains melatonin, natural melatonin. And I'm gonna tell you something kind of cool. In a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, they actually uh, they took 20 participants. They had a placebo group and a group that consumed tart cherry. And the results of the study actually showed that the total melatonin content was significantly elevated in the group that consumed the tart cherry. And the consumption of tart cherry also provided an increase in exogenous melatonin, which is beneficial in improving sleep duration, quality of sleep in both men and women, and it actually um, reduced disturbed sleep. Another shining star in this formula that I love is L-theanine. So L-theanine is an amino acid, and it actually increases the alpha waves in our brain. These ingredients are basically the building blocks to our relaxing sleep hormones. So the Serenity Soft Gel in combination with the Sleep Stick we've all come to find out about this week makes for a perfect addition to your sleep hygiene routine. So some of the, sorry, next we're gonna explore the power of using essential oils to support sleep. So clinical research actually supports the use of lavender essential oil to calm the nervous system as we heard about this morning and promote relaxation. And now we have the amazing Serenity Sleep Stick, which I'm so excited to incorporate into my practice. People love the sticks, all about the sticks, and they're more compliant with the sticks, I've noticed. And so rest and relaxation is such a missing puzzle piece in our modern world. So this stick is gonna be a true game changer with the ingredients like valerian oil, Roman chamomile, elderberry, elderberry extract, um, and it's, I think it's really gonna be a new staple in every household, honestly. So something else that's really cool is that valerian actually supports and enhances the effects of this stick and the essential oil blend, making the overall results of the doTERRA restful blend even more powerful and soothing. And as we've discussed, sleep and metabolic health go hand in hand. But what if I told you that combining our metabolic line with the Serenity Restful Blend could actually maximize your sleep cycles and metabolic health. If we are truly utilizing the product line to its full capacity, we can really optimize our outcomes to a whole new potential. And remember, proper blood, blood sugar stabilization throughout the day is gonna continue to contribute to positive sleep and circadian rhythm stability. And if we are neglecting one of these areas, our overall metabolic health is going to be impacted. So sleep, movement, diet, stress, stress management, and our thoughts have such a profound impact on our overall health. If you can take anything away from this talk, I hope that you grasp the importance of combining lifestyle habits, sleep hygiene, and even the way our thoughts impact our health. This is just not about products, this is about daily lifestyle choices. So here's a tentative daily, daily schedule or daily protocol that I would suggest trying. And I know you've probably heard a lot of recommendations, so there's lots of cool things to try. Feel free to take out your phone, get a screenshot of this. This is one of my favorite tools for blood sugar support and sleep support. So if you're dealing with either of these things, it might be worth trying. So in the morning, you can consume three to four drops of the MetaPower oil. Mid-morning, you can take one packet of the MetaPower Advantage. I love to mix this with a splash of orange juice, pinch of salt, 
make a little adrenal cocktail. At lunch, you can take one MetaPower soft gel with your meal. Midday, some MetaPower beadlets or gum as needed. And then with dinner, one capsule of the MetaPower Assist and two to three drops of the MetaPower Oil. Then before bed, I would suggest diffusing and applying Serenity Blend to the feet and the spine. Apply Serenity Stick to the neck, chest, and feet, or anywhere you'd like. And then take one to two Serenity Soft Gels before bed. So I'd love for you to try this. Let me know what you think. But in closing, the impacts of sleep on our well-being cannot be underestimated. I encourage each and every one of you to prioritize sleep, embrace sleep hygiene practices, and consider the benefits of combining our product line. So let's work together to achieve not just rest, but vibrant health from the inside out. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to a future of improved sleep and well-being together.